I made so many mistakes on that project. But you know, like I said, it's like everything, every mistake is a learning opportunity. All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my first knit and chat video. Um, I had a lot of fun filming the first one. And so I thought I would do another one today. It's, you know, pretty nice day outside. So I've got some okay light in my room. I'm, I am a little <laughs> backlit, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully that's not too annoying. But I thought I would talk a little bit today about like how I started knitting and um, kind of like my knitting journey and then maybe like some things that I wish I knew when I first started. Um, I didn't write any notes down about what I wanted to say today. So it's going to just kind of be like rambling and I have here um, a swatch that I'm working on. I'm going to make a separate video for it, but I am trying to make a progress video of sorts for the um, cardigan that I'm planning on doing. So I'm going to be finishing this up. I did the cables for it already. You can tell they look <laughs> a little wonky, um, but these are my first cables. So I am just working on them. I'm going to do a few more rows in the cable pattern and then uh, finish off with the ribbing so I can um, see how my gauge is for this project. And then uh, if we have time, I'll probably switch over to my other whip that I'm trying to work on. Um, so yeah, so let me, let me sit, sit back in my chair and um, I've got my thermos with me. So if you're looking to knit along, feel free to grab your project, uh, grab some hot beverage and um, yeah, let's, let's, let's chat. So um, I guess I'll just start by talking, like I said, about how I started knitting. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like get, get myself into the frame without cutting my head off. I'm, like I said, I'm just filming this on my phone. So yeah, so I started knitting, I'm trying to actually remember, um, so basically, okay, so we have to start, if we start at the very beginning, <laughs> um, I actually learned how to knit as a kid. Um, and I have to say it's probably like middle school, elementary school times. And the reason I started knitting, I think was actually because of my mom, because um, when I was a kid, I used to take piano lessons. <laughs> and, um, at these piano lessons, all the parents would stay like for the whole like hour or whatever it was because I guess it was probably a big pain to like drop your kid off and then drive home and then and then you'd have to immediately turn back around and drive back. So all these parents would like kind of chill in the room with us as we did our piano lessons. And what a lot of the moms did was they would bring their knitting projects with them, I guess to pass the time. Cause it was also um, back in the day, you know, before anyone had a smartphone. Or anything like that you know so either it was bring a book or bring your knitting I guess and my mom I felt inspired by these other moms and so she started knitting and you know she made us like some hats and stuff and I guess that inspired me to also try it out so I also made some hats and I think I made like a scarf for my dad or something like that but I, I never I never really got very far with it because I didn't have any like <laughs> so I didn't have any like knitting stamina so I never like finished anything um, so I never like really got anywhere with it. And then I think even around the time I was in college, I was still like knitting on and off, but not, not well, you know, like I said, I never got past making like hats and stuff, um, because I never finished anything. And then, and then after college, I, I dropped it completely cause I was working and, and everything like that. But then, then the pandemic hit and it was, you know, everyone was stuck at home and we had nothing to do. And, and I think um, at that time I stumbled across some crochet videos actually on YouTube and um, I'll link the, the video that I'm thinking of. It was probably not the very first video that I ever saw, but it was definitely the one that inspired me to get into making clothes because I guess for some reason I never thought you could like uh, crochet or knit clothes that like I would actually want to wear because you know, obviously the stereotype with fiber arts is that it's like something that grandmas do and it's not trendy. Um, but this video I saw, uh, uh, was someone had crocheted this like really chunky color block cardigan. And I mean, some of you might know what I'm talking about, but like I said, I'll link it below. Um, and I'll put a picture here of the cardigan. 
but I thought it was so cute and I guess it was inspired by like an Irish designer um, who I'm not personally familiar with but I really liked the colorful aspect of it and the uh, YouTuber just made it seem very easy and so I actually started crocheting and I did end up making a cardigan and I think a sweater yeah I crocheted I crocheted quite a bit actually um, during the lockdown um, and I really enjoyed it and I got really into it and I started buying you know all this yarn for it and and things like that I really like to crochet with um, cotton yarn and so that's what I was doing for about a year or so but then I found and then I started to find that like the projects that I wanted to do with crochet it wasn't like they were kind of un, unachievable but you know if you've ever crocheted you know that the fabric that you make um, compared to knitting is very different and I was kind of discovering that the fabrics that I was trying to create were all basically just a knit fabrics essentially you know and so I thought you know what maybe I should pick knitting back up like at that point I had essentially forgotten everything about knitting like I just knew I knew that you could knit and you could purl but I, I didn't remember like how to do it or anything like that um, but I knew that if I wanted to be able to make the projects that I was interested in, then I was going to have to, um, switch to knitting. And I think my reluctance at that point was just that crochet is, I guess, a lot more accessible in some ways. You know, you just have one hook and, um, it's just like a little less complicated, I think, in some ways. So I was a little resistant to picking knitting back up. But then I thought, you know what, I might as well, um, at that time, I think we had sort of gone back to work like it wasn't you know things weren't remote anymore so I was you know a little busier um but we weren't fully back I think we were maybe still hybrid at the time I'm trying to remember no 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 this was earlier this year so I picked up knitting in I believe it was February or March so yeah we were fully back in person what am I saying <laughs> so um let me see, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so I decided to pick up knitting and then I actually, I think the fact that I didn't remember anything was kind of a good thing actually because that meant that I could uh, teach myself from the basics and specifically um, I wanted to make sure that I learned the continental style because I had been watching um, some knitting YouTubers uh, like uh, Tiffany from Typical Bliss, for example, talking about how uh, continental is like typically a faster way of knitting and I thought you know what I might as well and then I I looked into it and I was like oh it's like pretty similar already to how crochet like how you hold your yarn when you crochet anyway so I was like oh like this shouldn't be too hard for me to pick up and it wasn't <laughs> um, but I, I can't say that I really uh, was a, a natural talent with the knitting stuff um, you know definitely definitely I learned a lot along the way um, but yeah, so that was March, like I said, uh, earlier of this year, so March 2022, and then I started, I think, with a cardigan project, which I still have sitting in one of my boxes. I'm actually going to frog that, maybe in another video, but I made so many mistakes on that project, but you know, like I said, it's like everything, every mistake is a learning opportunity, so I guess some of the things that I wish I had known when I started knitting... Cause I already, I did know a little bit about yarn and stuff like yarn weights and, and things like that from crochet. Um, but in terms of like specifically knitting, I think I had never really thought about gauge before. I don't know why I, I sort of feel like maybe gauge is a little bit more relevant in knitting because if your gauge is wrong in knitting, like not obviously if you're using a pattern, then that's a big problem. But if you are, I mean, if you have like a gauge just too loose or it's too tight, it just like makes the fabric look bad. Whereas I, I feel like with crochet, there's maybe a little bit more flexibility, like because crochet, the fabric is already pretty like mesh-like typically, right? Like you're kind of just knotting string together. And so you're not gonna have like a very smooth fabric anyways. And that's kind of like the texture that you expect from crochet. And so I, when I was crocheting, I never really felt like gauge was like a big deal. And I also didn't crochet off of any patterns. Uh, because I think with crochet, you know, the way that you build a garment is, I don't know, it's, it doesn't take as much pre-planning, maybe? I mean, I, I, I don't know, that was just kind of my personal experience. Um, and so gauge was something that I wasn't super familiar with. And my first project, that cardigan that I was talking about, 
I knit it way too tight because I, okay, and this is not really on me. <laughs> this is, I'm gonna say this is not 100% my fault. So I knit it with some cotton yarn from Hobie and uh, I believe it's like listed as a DK, but I, I would say it's really more of a worsen weight uh, yarn. And on the label, it says, I think four millimeters is a recommended needle size. And I really think it should be more like 4.5 to 5.5. Um, because I just followed the yarn label because I was like, you know what, I'll just follow what they say, you know, hopefully that won't lead me astray. <laughs> and it looks fine. Like the fabric is like, it is very tight, but it's not like, you know, it wasn't hard to, to knit with. Um, but it's just, it's, it's just very dense and it also was just taking me forever. You know, I mean, obviously I was an even slower knitter back then than I am now. Um, but it was just taking me absolutely forever to knit this cardigan. And I think that is really down to how tight the gauge was. And so I think what I learned from that was um, knit a swatch. <laughs> because I didn't do that. I didn't knit a swatch. I just dove right into it. And um, yeah, so I definitely am going to frog that. There's a lot of other mistakes on that cardigan as well. Um, but I think really the biggest lesson learned was to knit a swatch. Um, you know, it's not one of those like, it's like one of those eat the, it's not one of those things that people say um, just to say it and nobody actually does it, <laughs> um, you know, it's like actually you should be doing it um, because otherwise you might end up having to frog your whole project. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I wish I had kind of understood better at the time. Um, what else, what else did I wish I had known when I started out? Oh, I guess also like, um, maybe just have practiced a little bit more with like different types of cast ons. Cause I remember I cast on that project also with like, just like a knit cast on, but I cast it on, on a rib edge. So it looks really weird, right? Cause it's like a row of knitting and then it's, and then it's the one by one ribbing. And then now obviously I cast everything on with long tail cast on, like, you know, like everyone else does. But I was very intimidated by the long tail cast on. I remember like looking at a video for it and just having absolutely no idea what was going on. Um, so it definitely is a little intimidating at first. So I think that was kind of my, my issue with it. But yeah, and I guess the other thing is just like not being afraid to just try out different things and, and don't feel like I have to like finish a project perfectly or right away or anything like that, um, obviously. Um, but overall, I think I'd say, you know, the knitting journey for me has been pretty smooth. I started off uh, knitting a lot of stuff without patterns and I have yet to really knit anything with a real pattern um, even today like this this cardigan that I'm starting on is the first pattern that I bought but I'm not even going to be following the pattern exactly um, because I'm planning on modifying it but I think for me patterns have just been very intimidating I think because of the way that they're written it's like you know obviously a lot of abbreviations and and there's not really any visuals to help you understand what's going on because I also learned how to crochet from videos as well. Um, and, and that's really helpful to actually see someone else doing it. So I think um, hopefully, hopefully the transition into more patterns will be nice because I'm ready to move on from more basic things. Like I think when you're making a basic piece like a raglan sweater, like the one I showed in the previous video, it's not a big deal because you know it's there's nothing fancy going on and you just have to make sure it fits you and use your brain a little bit but if you're doing something that has like some more textures or interesting shaping then obviously that's when you would want to kind of rely on a pattern and someone having tested it for you and and multiple you know that's why they have test knitting and whatnot so yeah so just gonna take a little break to show you how my swatch is going um, I'm going to be filming progress on this like I said in a separate video but I'm gonna just switch over to um, five millimeters, I think now, is what the pattern calls for, uh, for the ribbing. So I'm going to do that. I did the body and the cables in seven millimeters. The pattern calls for eight. So I don't know if anyone watching this is planning on doing that pattern, or the pattern calls for eight millimeters, but I don't know if maybe the yarn that she used is just more like a heavy worsted than a regular worsted, but I tried eight and it did not look good. <laughs> um, it was too loose. So I switched over to seven and I'm just hoping that if I'm kind of far off of the gauge that's asked for in the pattern that I can stretch it out a little bit. Um, 
we'll see. I, I sort of feel like um, eight millimeters is, I mean, it's pretty big, right? So I'm not too surprised that it ended up being the wrong, kind of the wrong choice for me personally. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna swap over to the five millimeters. Uh, these, by the way, are the Knit Pro Nova Cubics. I got these from Wool Warehouse and I just wanted like a nice introductory set of metal needles because my other set are the bamboo takumis from Clover and I really like those but they do they are a little grippy you know because they're they're I guess like a wood type needle so I was thinking I would switch to metal see if I can do a little faster especially for like um I guess more gri grippier uh, yarns and I do also really like them because they're I don't know it's kind of hard to see in, in on the screen but um, they are they have a, a square-ish profile so they're not they're not circular they are square and that's supposed to be easier to grip and they're a little longer than than average I suppose although the the, the takumis are you know I mean let's see so here are my here's uh, some takumis that I have see that the the novas are a little longer so that's supposed to be better for your hands because I did or I yeah I did have pretty bad tendonitis when I was in college and the thing with tendonitis in, especially in your wrists is that you just become more susceptible to it over time and so I don't want to take too many risks especially now that I'm getting older so these are nice. I like them. I will say one of the sizes, I think like the four four millimeters or something like that. Um, one of them is like has has scratched up the other one a lot. I don't know if maybe they didn't sand it all the way down. I mean it, it just ha hasn't affected the knitting at all, but I just noticed that. But the other ones I've had no problem with. Okay, so I'm gonna just switch to ribbing on this one. And the project calls for a two by two ribbing, so that's what I'm going to do. I've never finished a project with two by two ribbing before, so I'm interested to see how it comes out. Oh, this one's a little scratchy too. These are the these are the five millimeters. Are a little scratchy. I don't know if maybe I should try to sand it down or something, but I can feel it scratching up the finishing on the other one, which is the problem I had with, I think, the four millimeters. That's a little frustrating, but these were not expensive. Um, I think, you know, maybe it is an issue of quality. I remember these being around like 60 bucks for the set, and then you get, uh, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you get seven uh, sizes. And then I think like four cables or something like that. So it's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal. Um, but obviously if I were to invest in nicer ones, I would expect them to not scratch each other up like this. So yeah, I'll finish the ribbing on these and then obviously they'll probably take a day at least to block and dry. Um, but yeah, what else did I want, what else did I want to talk about today? I sort of covered what I had planned to say, um, like how I got to knitting, um, things I wish I had known, um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear about your knitting journey, like how long have you been knitting for? Um, what do you like about knitting that's kind of keeping you going? I guess that's what I can talk about too here is, like, I think I've become really obsessed with knitting because it's just like, it just like combines so many positive things, right? Like it's a very relaxing activity, at least most of the time. Like, you know, if you're uh, picking up a new <laughs> technique or something that can be a little, you know, not stressful, but like obviously you need to like really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, but overall it's been, it's like a great way to relax after a day of work. You know, I always like to do, you know, a few hours of knitting after coming home from work and I find that it, it helps to kind of clear my head and get me focused on something more positive because the other thing that I really like about knitting is the 
creative aspect like not just creative in that like oh you can make like interesting artistic decisions or it's like sort of art related in general but creative is just like you're making something right so it's like the same feeling of like oh like you built this or you crafted this with your own two hands and like that sense of accomplishment because it's not a hobby where like you can't you don't have anything to show for it at the end of the day right um obviously like all hobbies are valid i think really like if you're like you like to play video games like it doesn't matter if you have anything to show for it but i think with knitting and other sorts of crafts it's like that really visceral sense of like yeah like i made this and not only did I make this, but I can use it, I can wear it. And then, you know, if you're like me and you're also interested in fashion, then that's really awesome too, because you can kind of make your vision come to life in a way. Like, obviously I don't claim to be a designer, but like, oh, like, even if you're making someone else's pattern of like, oh, like, I think this would look really awesome, you know, in this particular yarn colorway or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so I think that feeling of like working on something and seeing it grow, um, on your needles and then when you finally can bind off and, and you block it and you can wear it like I think that is super satisfying so I really recommend knitting to all my friends I'm like oh like you feel like you don't know what to do in your free time like pick up knitting you know <laughs> they're always thinking tired of me saying that um, but I think it's true I think it's true and, and hopefully if you're a knitter then you would agree with that is I think that's a big draw for me it's like yeah like you know I'm like having fun and, and making something and making stuff that I like or that I can give to others. Um, you know, that's, that's like a very awesome feeling to have. So I think that's why I've fallen in love so much with, with knitting. Um, and then, and also I, I would say the other part of it that sort of, um, is satisfying is also like, uh, being able to buy yarn and that being like a fun aspect of, of knitting and I guess just yarn crafts in general is like you know obviously there's a lot of satisfaction that you can get for a lot of people out of shopping for things like let's not let's not deny that aspect of it like when you see a new yarn and think about what you can make with it like you know that's just like very exciting um, and I think that's why so many of us have problems with a uh, yarn addiction okay give me one second my I think my phone's running out of storage. Okay, sorry, I had to like delete some old videos off my phone because I guess I was running out of storage. Um, so hopefully I was able to save whatever I, I had recorded earlier. Um, I will say I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> so apologies if just that train of thought abruptly ended. Um, yeah, I think I was just talking about like why I like knitting. Oh yeah, yarn shopping. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and for me, it's not like, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like addicted to it, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I just, I, you know, I try not to buy yarn if I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I can't help to like think of all these projects that I want to make. And it's just like fun to think about it, even though I know that I won't get to those in like a million years because of how slow I am. Um, so yeah, I think I'm hoping to add to my list of why I enjoy knitting so much is to like have more of like a knitting community to like share that passion with um i'm like not very good at like finding people to talk to about things <laughs> so if you're watching this and you want to talk to me about knitting please please do um and i and i've been trying to like find other knitting folks on on here and and work up the courage to to interact and stuff like that so yeah think, keep your fingers crossed for me <laughs> in that regard um but yeah i'm just finishing up the ribbing on here and then i'll just show you guys real quick how it looks i feel like my swatches are always like a mess of random tests and things like that but you know that's what they're for so that's okay um but yeah i think let's see what, what else should i talk about um knitting related stuff um, I guess the other thing that I would love to hear from people, <clears throat> if anyone is watching this, is what other knitting YouTubers do you like to watch? Because I'm always having trouble finding YouTubers that I really like to watch consistently. So, um, obviously I love watching Tiffany from Typical Bliss. Um, I watched a little bit of Aro Knits and Pearls. I like how consistent she is with her uploads. 
and uh, she has like a very very interesting like very straightforward business-like air about her which i sort of um find um interesting and she always knits like such nice projects i think because her thing is that she loves to test knit so she kind of gives us a preview of like what's what sort of new patterns are in the community right now so i really like that um i've also been watching oh my god and i cannot pronounce i can't pronounce her name she's on my she's on my computer screen right now actually um it's uh, oh god it's kutova kika <laughs> um i forget how i got into oh i think i was watching maybe her color work video oh no no it was her wedding dress video yes oh my gosh if you haven't seen this i'm gonna link it below um kotova kika she knitted her wedding dress and it came across my recommendations and i was just like awestruck and it looks so nice but i was just like how could she even do that like that's crazy um like i just like wouldn't even have the guts to do that like not that i'm getting married anytime soon <laughs> but i just i was just shook um and i do like a lot of her other videos and i was thinking about buying her um, knitting book that she came out with recently because it is an ebook um, format so I don't have to like wait for it to be shipped or anything like that but I just have so many other projects that I'm planning on making I think I'm gonna hold off on that for now unless for some reason she says she's gonna stop selling it then I'll just kind of pick it up um, just in case but I've been enjoying her videos um, what, else? what else have I watched oh popsicle frog knits um, she's also like a pretty new channel I think but I really like how thoughtful she is um, and I just think that the channel name is super cute <laughs> um, so that's someone else I've been watching um, who else have I been uh, I think that's kind of mostly it um, the other channels that I do subscribe to um, are more for like knitting help like knitting tutorials and not really like podcast and okay here's my random tangent about podcasts is i always thought podcasts were supposed to be like like voice only like radio but i guess people just use that term nowadays for anything that's just like sitting around talking casually and it's not like really edited or anything i don't know maybe that's that's the new terminology for for that kind of thing because you know now everything's video based obviously like who listens to the radio other than other than my mom <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've been really trying to look for more channels that have nice, chill knitting videos that are knitting things that I'm interested in because there are a lot of, uh, pod podcasts out there and a lot of them are like, you know, very nice people who are very good at knitting and have like nice voices and stuff. But to me, I also like want to be interested in what they're actually making and I think um sometimes my taste and their taste doesn't like really line up that much so i would say like the channels that i was mentioning earlier and i'll link them all below too if you're interested um those those people have taste that i feel like is more in line with my own because then i see their projects and i'm like oh like i kind of want to do that too so i guess that's where i'm hoping that there will be more and more people joining the community and, and then they will just get like more variety obviously so yeah okay so I just did I just did a little bit of, of ribbing so this is what it looks like now it's also starting to get a little dark so I might have to end this video soon ish um so here it is we got this is just stocking it down here there's a few rows of eight millimeters that I switched over and, and then cabling and then just a little bit of ribbing at the top um the ribbing i would say it, it's not it's not super necessary it's more just to see how it, it will behave um it's not really for gauge so much as just seeing how it looks but i think i've gotten better at the two by two ribbing i used to have that problem where like one column would be like a lot looser than the other one um but i think that my knit pearl transition has gotten a little better so i can't say i'm too unhappy with this so I think because I'm currently on a wrong side, I'll do one more row and then I'll bind off on the right side. Um, but yeah, so let me finish this. I'll think of something else to chat about and then I might end the video um, here and then I'll film a little clip for my other video on the progress of this swatch. But we'll see. Um, I, was, I, I, I think I'm using this also as an 
opportunity to see how long it takes for me to finish a project. I do have other two two other whips going right now, uh, which I won't show in this video. I'll maybe wait for my next uh, yarn and tell video to do that. But that means I'm gonna have three whips going on at a time, which I've actually never had that many. I've only ever had two at once. So I don't know how I'm gonna manage that, to be honest. Um, I think I said in my previous video that this cardigan project is gonna be more of like a back burner kind of thing. Like, I just pick it up every once in a while, but my focus is to get the other two things finished because one is my striped pullover and then the other one is a gift knit for my brother. So I obviously wanna get that squared away first. Um, but I definitely want to cast this one on because I've also just been really interested in lavender recently. So I been thinking about like what projects I want to make and I keep circling back to to lavender. So I was like, you know what? It's it's just my brain is telling me I have to start this project so I can fulfill that desire <laughs> to make something lavender. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and bind off and then we'll be we'll be done. I'm just gonna bind off and pattern. I did I did actually, okay, I'll show you my, my swatch for my brother's gift knit. I did, this is washed and blocked. I made just like a really tiny swatch just to see how the fabric is. So this is on 5.5 millimeter needles. And I actually did tubular, not tubular, Italian bind off for the two by two ribbing, which I think actually turned out quite nice. So I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but I followed video again from uh, Suzanne Bryan. I will say it's definitely a little bit more work than one by one ribbing uh, Italian bind off because there's like more of a pattern that you have to pay attention to but the result is essentially the same and I think it honestly like looks really good in this at least in this in this um, needle and yarn combination like I think it looks quite nice from both sides so I might do this on the cardigan project as well. I mean, this is also for cardigan project, for but for the um, spring cardigan project. Um, maybe not for the button band. I think for the button band, I'll just bind off in pattern because I think it'll look nicer with just like a straight edge. But for the bottom hem and for the sleeves, I guess I will laboriously do this <laughs> bind off. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. I think it's one of those things where you just have to get in the rhythm of it and just make sure you don't mess up. Um, but I think the end result is pretty worth it. I, it's kind of hard to see how nice it looks on the camera because I'm just filling on, on my ancient, ancient phone. Um, but for this swatch, I'm just going to bind off in pattern because I don't really want to sit through. <laughs> I don't really want to sit through that whole process again. And I, and I do, I know I can do it. Like I know that I'm able to do it. So I don't really feel the need to force myself to practice again. I mean, I don't know, maybe that will come back to bite me in the butt, who knows. But yeah, I don't know. I, I do really like a good, simple Italian bind off. I've done tubular bind off for some projects where I want a little more thickness, but I think the double knitting setup rows are always kind of a pain. So if I can get away with just a nice, clean uh, Italian bind off, then I usually try to do that. Yeah, I don't know if anyone has their favorite bind off. I know there's loads of different bind offs out there. You know, there's like these different like stretchy bind offs that people like to do and things like that. So if you have one that you really recommend, then feel free to tell me in the comments and I will check it out. But I think right now, because I like to do all my edges in one by one rib, or I guess even for two by two rib, I think the Italian bind off has been my go-to. Although it does take a little bit more work, obviously, but it's pretty, pretty meditative, I think, when you get into it. So, yeah, that's, 
So that's kind of all I had. Uh, I mean, not that I had much planned to talk about today, but I figured, you know, it's not, not too bad. I mean, it was a lot sunnier earlier, but I think the light still is okay. So I thought I would film another video. Um, and I'm hoping that as I continue doing this, my videos will be a little bit better. Oh yeah, that was the other thing that I wanted to say. I was re-watching my first video and I kept noticing that my, my head was like this, like cut off because I was like leaning close to be able to see what I was showing on the screen. So I, I'm trying to make a concerted effort to sit back a little bit so that you can see my whole person and also like what I'm working on, especially. Um, so yeah, it's like things like that, you know, like um, you don't really know how to do something until you do it. Sounds so obvious, but I, you know, applicable to all things in your life. Um, but yeah, I think we're almost there. I'm, about, I'm also like just really slow at binding off in pattern. I mean, I'm just a slow knitter in general. Um, I have gotten better at knitting without staring at my work, like if I'm just doing a uh, knit stitch, like in the round for example, I've been able to get that done pretty hand, well not hands off, eyes off I guess. Um, <laughs> and I'm pretty proud of myself for that because I noticed the other day I was like, oh like I can actually like tell what my fingers are doing just by feeling. So. You know, that's also something I'm working on, but I haven't found that I've really been able to knit that much faster. So we'll see. I mean, like I said, I've only been knitting since March, so I haven't even been knitting for a year. So I'm, I consider myself really still a beginner in a lot of respects, just a very invested beginner. <laughs> um, so hopefully by the time next March rolls around, I'll feel pretty happy with how far I've gone and then I'm thinking when that time does come um, I'll film another video showing everything that I've made which so far hasn't been that many things so I've knit I knit the pullover that I showed in the previous video I'll definitely be able to finish my other stripe pullover soon I actually have knit another I, I made a knit tank um, as my first finished knit garment actually but that I don't have with me right now. Although I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I made it from, I made it, it's like a cotton striped tank with a cute little collar. And I made it based on actually a crochet pattern that I did. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that one. And then I have actually another project sitting in a bin at my parents' house that I made um, also without a pattern. It's actually a um, seamed sweater with this really nice, variegated yarn from Knit Picks um, and I really like the color but I, I oh crap just dropped a stitch hang on um, I don't really love how I did the sleeves on that so I mean I actually already washed and, and blocked it because it's seamed so you know it's better to block all your pieces before seaming them but I think I may frog the sleeve and redo it because I kind of decreased too much and I'm not super happy with how the cuff came out. So I think I might do a frogging video at some point in the future. And um, once I actually, I don't can't even frog anything right now because I don't have my ball winder, um, which actually my brother said that he would get me one <laughs> for my birthday. So it was my birthday like a few weeks ago and um, I told him, hey, like if you're thinking of something to get me, you can just get me this ball winder. Um, and he said he did, but I haven't heard from him. I, you know, I don't, don't want to be annoying and like be like, excuse me, did you get my ball winder yet? <laughs> so I'm just waiting for him to bring it up. Um, but yeah, whenever I get my hands on that, then I should be able to do a frogging video because I think that would be fun to do also. And then I could talk a little bit about like why I decided to frog the pieces in more detail and what I'm planning to, to do, um, after frogging. But I finally bound off my swatch. This is like the largest swatch I've ever made because I had to do so many things. Um, so yeah, so I just bound off and pattern just to make it easy. Um, but I think for the button band, that's what it'll look like, which I think, I think that'll be, I think that'll be quite nice. Um, I actually really like this yellow color and I have, you know, a lot of a skein left. 
I only bought one skein though because it's just for the embroidered flowers. So I don't know, maybe if I, I, I did quite enjoy this yarn. Like it's, it's pretty soft. I'm just testing it against my neck because that's where I feel the most itchiness. Yeah, it's pretty good and it, it definitely feels really nice and warm. So I don't know if I enjoy knitting with this for this project, maybe I'll consider because I feel like actually this would be really cute as like a, a nice, maybe like a full cabled sweater or something. I don't know. I have to, I have to think about it. Um, but I can't add to my project list because there are so many things I want to do. Um, okay, but yeah, so here's my swatch and I'm going to uh, film a separate clip talking about it for this progress video that I mentioned earlier. But I'm pretty happy. I, I know you can like hardly even see anything because of the light. Sorry. Um, but yeah, thank you for hanging out with me today. Um, I'm hoping to keep to this like every few weeks sort of schedule. And then I think maybe my next video I will update more on my current whips. And then I think obviously at that point I'll have actually cast on the project and hopefully have something to show. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you have a lovely day, night, evening, morning, etc. And um, please comment with, you know, what you're working on um, and what you wish you knew when you were starting out. Because, I mean, I think it's nice to spread the wisdom um, <laughs> and help other new knitters as well. All right. Uh, but that's it for me today. Bye, everyone.